Okay, now we're gonna move on to functional stitches or functional seaming. One of the things we're gonna do is we're gonna do a stay stitch and then we're gonna do a directional stitch. So when you do the stay stitch, there is a stencil for this. So in that module, you'll find something that looks similar to this. So again, you're gonna need to have a printer in order to do that. If you don't have a printer, that's also okay. You can kind of just take anything round, maybe you have a pot or a pan, I don't know, a bowl, and just like lay it on your fabric and then just trace half of the circle. And then you can essentially just kind of fold it in half. So half a circle, cut it, cut across, and then just take a little bite out of it. So it doesn't have to be perfect. All we're trying to do is we're trying to make the illusion of a neckline. So if this had shoulders and if it had, you know, a body, you can kind of see this as a little tank top. So that's kind of what we're just trying to um, illustrate. The reason why we're making it seem like it's a shirt or a tank top um, is because that's normally where you would have stay stitching. So what stay stitching is, is it's almost always the first step in um, simple patterns. So let's say you're making a t-shirt or a tank top. Step one is probably gonna be to stay stitch. And in a commercial pattern, it's pretty much just going to say, Step one, stay stitch. And then that's it, I won't really tell you much more. There is a tidbit about stay stitching at the top of the pattern within the like small print, but it's nice to do a sample so that you know when you start working with commercial patterns. So what stay stitching is, is it's a stitch that stays in the garment. And that's why it says stay stitch, but it's not seen. So it's usually a stitch that happens within the seam allowance, or it always happens within the seam allowance. Again, we're working at 5 eighths, so it would have to be inside of the 5 eighths line. So again, if our seam allowances are 5 eighths with commercial patterns, my stay stitch could be half an inch, 3 eighths of an inch, quarter of an inch, or an eighth of an inch. Any of those, anything inside of the 5 eighths would work because then you wouldn't see it when you make the garment. What we're gonna do is we're gonna stay an eighth of an inch away from our seam line. So we're going to go an eighth away from five eighths. So we're going to be at four eighths or half an inch. So I know it's kind of a weird measurement. And if you're not that good with um, these weird, funky seam gauge measurements, there is a page in the module that has a nice kind of like printout or handout that you can use and kind of just practice with it. Just look at that handout, look at your seam gauge and just try to practice figuring out the okay, four eighths is the same as half an inch eight eighths is the same as a full inch. So just kind of play with those in your head. So again, we're gonna stay an eighth of an inch within our seam line. So we're going to stay stitch at half an inch. So half an inch is where we're gonna stay stitch. And what you wanna get into the habit of is you wanna make sure that you're paying attention to the um, pattern or the instructions. And my instructions tell me that for my stay stitch, they want me to stitch from the edge in towards the center of my neckline. Well, I don't really know where my center is right now, but on the, on the pattern, it says with arrows that are drawn that it wants me to work inwards. So I need to find my middle ground. So the easiest way to do that, just take your kind of half circle, kind of, kind of uh, crescent shape, I guess, fold it in half, and this is the way that I always find the center of something, as long as it's symmetrical. Fold it in half, and I didn't do the greatest job at cutting this, so it's a little bit funky, but that's pretty much folded in half. I'm gonna take my scissors, whether they be my little clipping scissors or your big old um, dressmaker shears, doesn't matter. Just take the very, very tip and snip, oh goodness, just like an eighth to a quarter of an inch, just a tiny little snip. Okay, so I just made a little tiny snip that now tells me that that's the middle of this sample piece. So that little cut, easy to see, even though it's tiny. So now I know that if I'm gonna start on the edge and work my way to the middle, that's the middle. And then again, I can come from the other side and work my way into the middle this way. Okay, notice it's just one piece of fabric. So it says on there, you know, cut one, unless otherwise noted. So you only need one piece you're gonna stay stitch before you do any other sewing. Again, that's why it's step number one. You're gonna do it on the front of your tank top and on the back of your tank top separately. Sometimes they'll have you on more difficult patterns. They'll have you like connect the shoulder seams, maybe do a few other things first. But when it's a simple, easy pattern, they're gonna have you do it at step one. 
So let's go ahead and start this. I'm gonna start from one end and I'm gonna stitch till I get to the middle, till I find my little snip. And then I'm gonna come from the other edge and work my way into the middle till I hit my snip. I'm not gonna back stitch because this is not a seam, it's just a stitch. So I don't need to back stitch, but I do need to make sure that I'm at my regular stitch lane. And instead of looking at five eighths, you know, this little scotch tape marking here, I'm gonna work at half an inch. So my machine is great because mine has a indicator every eighth of an inch. So I'm gonna be stitching not at five eighths, but at half an inch, which is the line right next to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my fabric under my foot, starting from one end. So I'm gonna make sure I'm at the very, very end. And again, I'm not using five eighths. My raw edge is gonna be touching the one next to five eighths. You can take your seam gauge and put a Sharpie or some scotch tape if you don't have a, um, a stitch plate or throat plate like this. And again, I'm not gonna back stitch because I don't need to. And I'm gonna stitch. And when you stitch this, you really, really, really wanna make sure that you are kind of curving the fabric, that you're working your way, using the presser foot, lifting it up and down, that you are what's called pivoting. So I'm not going to, I'm gonna do it right now, but please don't do this. I'm not gonna open this up and straighten this out. Don't do that. Because what that's gonna do is it's gonna warp the edge of this fabric. And the whole reason for a stay stitch is we want this curve to stay just like this. I don't wanna warp this. I don't wanna distort it. I don't wanna stretch it out. Everyone looks at this. This is a tank top, remember that. Everyone looks around your neck, they look at your face, so they're gonna see this. You don't want it to get all wobbly and distorted. So the stay stitch holds the shape and keeps it from being distorted while working with it. So again, you're going to really wanna work on what's called pivoting, where you're moving the fabric under the needle. And an easy way to pivot is to make sure that you needle down, so I'm hand willing my needle down into my machine. I'm lifting my presser foot and I'm just rotating my fabric just a little, just a little bit at a time. So again, you can kind of see, I'm gonna take my hand on the hand wheel, I'm gonna rotate down. I'm gonna lift up my presser foot and I'm just gonna rotate a little bit at a time. Now this machine is great because this machine actually has a needle down button. So if I want my needle to stay in the down position every time I stop sewing, I can hit that button and you'll see if I sew, it stays put and it gives me the ability to lift up my foot easier. So it stays down, I can lift and pivot. So these are small, like, turning motions. I'm not turning a full corner. I'm not pivoting completely. I'm just, just pivoting enough so that I'm curving my stitch without distorting my fabric. So this is going to be your first really curvy stitch. It's going to be quite curvy. Okay. And I can tell I'm coming to my center because I have that little cut there. So I'm going to go to the center and I'm going to stop. I'm not gonna stitch anymore, I'm not gonna back stitch. And I'm gonna, now that my needle's down, I'm gonna hand wheel so that my take up lever's at the top and I'm gonna pull away. I'm gonna cut that nice and short. And I'm gonna cut these real short right now because I'm gonna start working on the other side. So I wanna make sure that these are out of the way. And I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of the ones at the edge. Cut those nice and short because they're not basted. I'm gonna get rid of them. Okay, so I've done half of my stay stitch and notice it's a nice pretty curved stitch. Now I need to do the other side and I need to start from here and work my way up. Now my stitch plate, my throat plate actually does have a measurement on the left side of the foot, which isn't very common. So you might not have, and maybe this is all blank. You don't have to worry about marking on this side. You already made a mark on your right side. So what I do is I simply flip my fabric upside down. So now I'm looking at the wrong side. And then I can easily line that raw edge up with the half inch line. So it's a simple, again, I was looking at it like this before. All I simply have to do is just flip it upside down. Um, I normally will check in class because it's usually a different color bobbin than spool. If you have a different color top and bottom thread, then it'll, it'll change um, on either side. So lining it up to half an inch, lining it up at the very, very edge of the fabric and I'm gonna start stitching. And again, I don't wanna distort this or stretch, the, stretch, stretch it out, sorry. So I'm gonna make sure that it's needling down and then I have the ability to easily pivot. 
And again, this is your first curvy stitch, so please take your time. Curves are much more time consuming, but when you do them right, they look beautiful. Now, if you have one of the adapters to make a leg press for your machine, this one comes with it, but I don't have it with me. Um, you might want to use that now because that also makes it a lot easier to do curves, having the leg press or thigh press. Okay, I can tell that I'm coming up to the middle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come to the middle and then I'm gonna overlap just like two stitches. So I'm on the stitch and I'm gonna overlap just a couple of them. So I don't know if you can see that or not, but I overlap just a few. So I've really kind of finished off that line. Now I'm gonna hand wheel so that my take up lever goes to the top. Make sure my presser foot is up and I'm gonna cut these nice and short. One there, sorry, I snipped there. And what you'll see is I have a complete curved stitch. It's not at 5 eighths, so I'm gonna get my seam gauge out so I can verify. It's not at 5 eighths. This is where I'm gonna stitch maybe the bias tape on or maybe I connect a collar to it, I don't know. That's where the seam's gonna happen. This is at half an inch. And so because it's at half an inch, when I finish this off, it's not going to be seen. So that one, is a little bit more difficult. That one's a little harder than the next one. That's a stay stitch. And it contains directional stitching because like you can see here, I stitch inwards. And this next sample, this next sample is essentially um, uh, just a directional stitch. So it really is just a directional stitch. It's very, very easy. We're just making a little miniature, let's say Barbie skirt. So really all you need for this is you need maybe your six by six square and just take your shears and just cut off a triangle off of either side to make it into a little trapezoid, okay? So you're gonna need two of those. The measurements are in the module, but it's really simple. Just take a square piece and just kind of make a trapezoid. So I've got two pieces. And again, I'm seaming it. Imagine it's a Barbie skirt. So I'm gonna put pretty sides together, raw edges even, and I'm going to pin it perpendicular to my stitching line which is gonna run along the longer edge. And this one really only needs a couple because it's a little bit shorter. So maybe three here. Same thing on the other side, I'm gonna stitch both of them again. Imagine it's a skirt. And this sample is really, really easy. This is just so that you guys can get in the habit of directional stitching. So just like with the stay stitch that we just did, there was direction to it. The pattern drew arrows on it, and the pattern told me that they wanted me to work inwards towards the middle. Sometimes you'll have arrows that go the other way. Sometimes you'll have arrows that go like down the shoulders. Whatever your pattern tells you, you need to do. So with a skirt, there's not normally arrows, but one of the things that you want to get in the habit of is when you have a skirt or pants or anything that has a bottom, we usually want to start at the bottom and work our way up. So for a skirt, we would work at the wide end and work to the narrow side, or I like to say big to little, or you know, fat to skinny. So we're really gonna work with the wide side and work towards narrow. So to do that, I'm gonna flip my little sample over and I'm gonna just produce a regular seam. So I'm gonna put my fabric pretty sides together, raw edges even. My raw edge is going to go to the 5 8 mark because this is just a regular seam now. I am going to backstitch, so I want to make sure that I am backstitching. Again, watching 5 eighths, removing my pins as I get to them. And mine's a little frayed, so I'm just coming just within 5 eighths, just to Backstitching at the other end. Now I need to do the other side and I need to go wide to narrow. And again, this one's really easy because, well, it's pretty easy. But again, if you don't have any direction on the left side of your foot, then you need to flip your fabric over, go from the opposite side and do the same thing. Stitch 5 8 seam. And you'll notice that, oh, my pins are upside down, but that's okay. The way that I've pinned them, it's still really easy for me to remove them as I stitch. So I'm back stitching, stitching five eighths. Sorry, 
removing my pins as I get to them because it's easy with my balls out. So really easy if the pin heads are outwards and pin perpendicularly. And I'm gonna go ahead and back stitch again. Clip my threads nice and short. And then what I would love for you to do is I'd like for you to press this, press it open on both sides, and then leave it. The reason why I'm gonna have you leave it, you don't have to turn it right side out, is because I wanna be able to see that you've stitched with back stitches, that it's a regular stitch length, two and a half, um, and that the tension is okay on both sides. So at this point, I'm gonna bump to, jump to my iron real quickly. And again, I'm gonna give it a nice good press just to solidify those stitches. Just a nice hard press. And then at this point, if you have a sleeve board or a tailor's board, this would be great. This would be a perfect time to use it. Otherwise, if you don't, just use what you've got. And I'm just gonna kind of press this open without pressing too you know, hard on the edge of the fabric so I don't create creases. Same thing here. And now that this one's pressed open, I can give it a good press without worrying about creasing the fabric. And then again, once you've pressed it, you can go ahead and just leave it like this. And I would love it if you could photograph from the top and from the bottom again. Um, no need to do anything else but those two.